building New Japan. We're going to try and get to January 2026. Quickly as we can. Just give us a little break in between from then to now. Whilst I, whilst I don't particularly want to be booking WWE. Makes sense. And of course, so this episode series is a challenge run. So, let's see what challenges we have decided to go with. And here we go. Here are our challenges. All of these people on this top list need to challenge for their top divisional title by Wrestle Kingdom 20. All three Reiwa Musketeers. So that is Yota Suji, Shota Umino, and Ren Narita. Uya Uyamura. Sho. Great Okam. David Finley Jr. Evil. And Kosai Vegeta. And our other ones, we, we can never disband the Bullet Club. There has to always be a Bullet Club in this save. We have to have at one point where all of our belts are on Gaijin foreign wrestlers. As we're losing Kazuchika Ricarda, we need to bring in a fake Rainmaker. Hiromu Takahashi cannot challenge for a belt before Wrestle Kingdom 19. We need to build a new faction. Chaos must be ended. Anybody that leaves WWE in this first in this first year, well, no, in both years, that does it that is available must appear on a strong pay per view course that's people who they've released who will be released in game so all the people like riddle mustafa ali nick nemeth uh Ma Ma madden and mansoir they're not needed to appear on them some of them will but they're not part of this challenge it's all the people that are released from the start of this game and somebody in the two-year run has to go from unimportant to a champion wonder who that might be but uh, there are our challenges. Our third episode is New Year's Dash. This episode is just on its own. I'm excited for this. I hope you guys are too. Next episode. We'll be Battle in the Valley. A strong show. Then we'll start our new beginning tour. Up to Sapporo. Sapporo. We'll do Fantastic Mania. Before Osaka. So we're going to be the next three episodes. We're going to have. That battle at the Battle of the Valley is the next episode. New beginning in Moya to Osaka. To Sapporo even. And then the second night of Sapporo will open up when Fantastic with these nights were being turned into a Fantastic Mania before Osaka. But without any further ado, let's get into this show then. So one tiny mistake I made with this title was that I accidentally gave uh, Taiji Shimori the KOPW title one night early. He was supposed to win it here. So what we've done is we've had a triple threat instead. Our opening match is a triple threat. Yo versus Great Okan versus Toriano. And Great Okan has beat Toriano to become the number one contender for the KOP for the provisional KOPW championship. He cuts a promo and so and essentially he sets out that his plan for the match. Is a two out of three falls match. Taiji Ishimori. The fitness scramble. Gets a 57 rating. 57 for Great Okada. 53 for Yo. A 46 for Toriyano. Match two of the night. Sees two young lions take on the former IWGP Tag Team Champions. Bishimon. Versus Yuta Nakashima and Oscar Luebe. So essentially, I don't think I'm going to send these guys off on excursion yet. I don't think they're quite there in game as they are in real life, which is a shame because they are actually really talented guys. Oscar Loebe being as tall as he is, is a very different asset to have in New Japan Pro Wrestling. But in the end, obviously, Bishamon pick up the victory here. 746, Goto pinning Oscar Loebe. Match three, the House of Torture. Evil, Dick Togo, and Renarita versus ELP, Hikuleo, and Tamatonga. And it's Narita who taps out El Phantasmo. And after the match in his press conference, it's Ren Narita who issues the challenge to Tamatonga 
And that match, I can actually make that official with you here, will be happening in Nagoya. So for the Never Openweight Championship, Ren Narita versus, not evil, evil the one who had the shot in real life. Ren Narita versus Tama Tonga. Fifty six rating, pretty good. A fifty nine for Narita is the highest, joint with El Fantasmo. That actually probably did boost this match considering they were the two who were involved in the finish. Weakest in the match was Dick Togo. Makes sense. Evil is in extremely poor form. Oh, blasphemy, that's what I say. Match four. In a heavyweight junior match, Shingo Takagi teams with Titan. Who basically, I'm just, I know he's not normally on most of these tours. But I, he's T Turn, he's signed to an NJPW contract. I don't really care if he's re realistically, he wouldn't be, he'd be doing CMLL. He's here, because I want him here. T Turn picks up the win here, however, pinning Tiger Mask 4 with a Torneo. Shingo, head and shoulders above everyone else, with a 76. God, I think Shingo's got to be a, one of our big players in this save. Kind of makes it a bit awkward, I think, considering the title, the champion, is in his own faction. But Nagata gets a 42, which is good for one, a good hand. He's able to do these sort of matches. Tiger Mask probably isn't the best person for this, but honestly, it's either him or Taguchi. And I decided to go with Tiger Mask. Match 5. The rest of LIJ, Tetsuya Naito, Yota Suji, Hiromu Takahashi, and Bushi versus the Just Five Guys, Sanada, Taishi, Uya Uyamura, and Doki. Now, you may notice there's a little bit of an imbalance here, because on LIJ's side, you've got two heavyweights and two juniors. It's on Just Five Guys' side, you've got two, three heavyweights and one junior. There is a very big specific reason for that. Throughout this year, as part of my challenge of Hiromu Takahashi's not able to challenge for a title, Hiromu is going to be moved to an open weight. Which essentially means I'm just going to put... I'm going to put him in every single goddamn tournament. He is going to try and do... I think Osprey didn't do it because I think he missed on the junior... T or the World Tag League or the Junior Tag League a few years back. But I think I'm going to try and put Hiromu... In every single tournament this year. Basically make him an open weight. Which I think is what Hiromu needs. But I think it's what the New Japan main event scene also needs. A 48 rating though. Not bad. We get a quick. We get a double count out match here. As Gabe Kidd. Coughlin. Clark Connors. Jelanoni. And David Finley. The Bullet Club. War Dogs. Take on the United Empires, Callum Newman, Jeff Cobb, Panare, Francesco Aquila, and TJP. So no Osprey. So obviously Osprey himself is also leaving us at the end of this month. So we're going to get a little bit of United Empire internal struggles about who the new leader is going to be. That's going to be our mo most of our spring storyline for the United Empire. Who's going to be the next leader? It's a 59 rating. Double count out, which is rare in New Japan. I don't think I'm going to do the War Games match, which is obviously happening in real life, because I don't think this game would let me do it for New Japan. Unless I have to do it as an opener and it might get a 39 rating. Whereas just even having this 10 man without Osprey in it, having Newman instead of Osprey, it's almost a 60. Even with a bad finish for a New Japan, if this was a clean finish, this probably gets a 65. But, next up, we get a six-man tag, as it's the other half of the House of Torture. We saw the other half earlier. Sho, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Yujiro Takahashi, taking on El Desperado, and Six and Nine. Master Wato, and Rizuki Taguchi. Maybe I should have put a heavyweight in here to balance out against Yujiro, but... It's the team with which has the heavyweight who pick up the win. Sho picking up the win against pinning Rizuki Taguchi. And after the match, he calls out El Desperado for a championship match. 
Desperado basically says he's got to prove it and earn it next week at Battle in the Valley. So we're going to have a show singles match at Battle in the Valley. And I believe it's our main event next. It is our main event next. As the Chaos Combat Club, Kazuchika Ricardo, Tom Hirishi, John Moxley and Brian Danielson lose to TMDK, Zack Sabre Jr., Kosai Fujita, Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols. Kosai Fujita had to sign him back because he was already on an excursion for some reason. But having graduated pretty much in real life. He's not considered a young lion, which is always good. But Zack Sabre Jr. picks up the win. Passing out Brian Danielson. With orienteering with Napalm Death. And after the match, Dan Zack Sabre Jr. starts shouting into the camera. About Brittle Brian, Nigel McGuinness's line and all that. And essentially he challenges to a rematch one on one. Because either way, both of their matches so far have had a caveat. The first match, Danielson won with a strike. This match was a multi-man match. Other people worked on, on, worked on Danielson before Zack Sabre Jr. got the win in touch. They need a one-on-one -on -one match. Submissions only. It's a 71 rating. Best match of the night, which is good for the main event. Best workers in it. Akada gets a 78. Danielson a 79. Zack a 69. Nice. And what do we get overall? For our first show in this save, it's a 70 rating. It creeps up, up in nine regions. We could have gained more, so that's actually a massive net positive. I'm happy with that. And I hope you guys are too. So I don't really have a sign-off yet for this series, because it's different to from then to now. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And our next episode will be out in a couple of days, because it's going to take me... Oh no, next episode's Battle in the Valley. That could be out tomorrow, actually. So I hope you enjoy that. Yeah.